I think the amendment has arrived and the gentleman is recognized. Uh, I want to th thank you, Chairman. Now, from the beginning, President Biden vowed to raise taxes immediately on U.S. businesses, even though our country is recovering from the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. But the last thing struggling American businesses need right now is a massive tax hike. Of course, Mr. Biden's tax plan shouldn't come as a surprise. When he was vice president, the United States corporate tax rate was the highest in the industrialized world. U.S. companies weren't competitive with their foreign counterparts. For those of us on Ways and Means at the time, we can remember there were constant headlines about companies moving their headquarters overseas, largely because of our un uncompetitive and outdated tax system. The Biden plan to increase the corporate tax rate from 21 percent to 28 percent would quickly take us back to those days, as well as the tax increase Democrats the Diaz are proposing in this bill. Now, if our members across the aisle get their way, this country would be saddled once again with one of the highest business tax rates in the industrialized world. Considering federal and tax rates, U.S. companies, both large and small, would see higher taxes than their foreign competitors in Europe. Mr. Biden says our tax system encourages offshoring, profit shifting, and inversions. And he should sure know, because back when he was vice president, those things were all true. But then we passed the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And all of a sudden, businesses started staying home. And other people from around the world flocked to America to do business here. This isn't rocket science. To put it simply, by passing the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, we made America a more attractive place to do business. And this translated into more American jobs, plain and simple. Before the pandemic in 2019, the U.S. unemployment rate fell to its lowest in 50 years. Just two years ago, the unemployment rate was just 3.5%. But the global minimum tax book proposed in this bill would make America the least competitive country once again, driving millions of jobs, manufacturing, research, and investment overseas. Democrats' global tax, minimum global tax, makes it better to be a foreign worker or company than an American one, putting American companies at a disadvantage to our foreign competitors. This is the opposite of what happened under tax cuts and Jobs Act reform, where America became the most competitive economy in the world. In 2016, even Treasury Secretary Liu, after releasing the anti-inversion regulations, noted they were only a band-aid, and inversions and tax-driven foreign takeovers would continue without getting the corporate rate down and making the U.S. system more competitive. We all remember that giant sucking sound in the Obama years as corporations fled to foreign showers. There hasn't been a major corporate inversion announced since the tax, uh, since our GOP tax form was passed. Prior to COVID, the U.S. economy was firing on all, on all cylinders. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act made this country a more attractive place for business to headquarter, invest, and create American jobs. Tax reform stemmed from the flood of offshoring while encouraging U.S. companies to invest here and to stay here. According to a study by Price Waterhouse, the data support the notion that the 2017 tax reform legislation improved the attractiveness of the United States as the tax domicile for multi-international enterprises. If Democrats are confident that jobs won't be fleeing the country because of these tax hikes, they will have no issue voting for this amendment. The amendment simply says that tax increases will not go into effect until the U.S. Treasury can certify that U.S. jobs and investment will not move offshore because of this bill. Now, I brought a friend of mine along today because I know that it's easy sometimes. Now, you're not allowed to say anybody lies here, but you can say that they misspoke. So if you bring, this is a guy, we, we found him wandering around in the White House. Um, he's helping them with messaging. And I, I would just call, you know, so the whole message of Pinocchio, uh, and, and that's not my way of describing it, it's actually the Washington Post, uh, when Ms. Pelosi said that 86 million middle-class uh, families will see a tax increase. Washington Post gave her two Pinocchios, right? And then um, Ms. McCaskill said the GOP tax cuts are not going to be helpful to the vast majority of people. And again, the Post gave her two Pinocchios. I would just suggest that the moral of the story is that when you raise taxes, when you raise regulations, you drive American businesses offshore. You drive American jobs offshore. You, in all sense of things misspeak about what it is you're trying to accomplish. Let's make sure we don't lose American jobs when we do these kind of things. And Mr. Mr. Chairman, I would like to uh, put into the record, and it does refer to you, sir. It's uh, from, the Washington, uh, from the Wall Street Journal yesterday. Uh, and this is, again, you know, I, have great, I have great affection for you, so I'm not taking a shot at this. But it's been under wraps longer than some Egyptian mummies, but the bill for the Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, Bernie Sanders spending agenda is about to be exposed to the air. 
The Ways and Means Committee draft increase that leaked over the weekend is a $2.2 trillion Washington money grab for the ages. The tax proposals aren't final, but Ways and Means will start debating them as early as Tuesday. So much for deliberation. As Chairman Richard Neal has said, publicizing tax increases too soon gives the opposition time to bill. Now that the details are out, we see what he means. This is a bizarre spin. And why in the world would we want to champion the largest tax increase since 1968? I would just suggest if you don't want your nose to get too big, stop telling, or, I'm sorry, stop misspeaking about the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the greatest influencer of a, of a great economy and an ascension of American workers and American competitors around the world. Pinocchio won't tell you the truth, but I will. And so will the American public. We had great growth under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. We had never seen anything like that in over half a century. I yield back and I would just suggest to my friends, please, if you're concerned about American jobs, vote for this amendment. The, the chair would recognize uh, himself for just a couple of minutes. Uh, the chair is beginning to sense a pattern here with this editorial. So do we have to include it twice or three times? Would it be okay if we just included it once? asking me <laughs> and you, you now listen you know I, I do have great affection for you not, not just because we're Irish <laughs> believe me in, 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 in an I, Ireland I was mayor, this Mr. would Kelly. be called Blarney it's mild <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you're mayor uh, yeah. so I'm going to recognize Mr. Smith on the amendment thank you Mr. Chairman I, I think it's important that we have uh, like I said these discussions uh, because I think this legislation is taking us in the opposite direction, certainly as it relates to uh, the uh, misspeaking, uh, definitely misleading. And uh, as some in the in even the mainstream press would say, uh, uh, the award of many Pinocchios uh, on the assertions of the Tax Cuts and Jobs, and jobs Act. With that, I yield the balance of my time to Mr. Kelly. Uh, I, you know, I, I, uh, I know that we... We come here and we say that, well, well, we need to start working together. And we really do need to start working together, not just for our own sake, but for the sake of the American people, because they have lost so much faith and trust and confidence in the way this model works. It makes you start to wonder, so what 